Hello, good day, welcome back to Coding with Vero. And today we're going to do the last part of our AppSmith development series. And I wanna close this off by showing you how to fetch data once you've authenticated. So far, what have we done? We've shown how you can fetch data. That was the very first thing we did by fetching a list of item from pocket base and putting it in a table. Um, but we didn't use any authentication for that. We kind of was like, imagine like if you were actually build this out as an e-commerce application, you don't want users to have to log in before they can see what you're selling. So you can imagine like you go to amazon.com, you'll be able to see the products before you even create an account. But once you sign on and we have our JWT token stored, so let's use that JWT now in this video to fetch data for the specific user who signed in. And so what it means is that at the end of this video, you're gonna see that how, and what we want is when we go to our order history page, we should see our past orders. Now we can see add open orders to that page too, but I'll leave open orders for you to decide whether you wanna put it on that page or somewhere else. But at least since I'm saying order history, I want to see the history of my order, so with the shopping cart. Now, I'm not going to build out the items for shopping cart, but that's easy to do. Once you have the list of your carts that have been you know, closed or ordered already, then you can say, well, okay, I click on that. I can go to the order details page, or and then you know, it can be another list of the items in that shopping cart. So I'll leave that in exercise for you. All right, so let's jump in. So, okay, let's take a look at our pocket base collection. And specifically, we're gonna look at our carts collection. We can see that there are three shopping carts um, in this collection. Two of them belong to the user John Doe. One of them, of his, of his carts, you already ordered. We talked about this before. Um, we're not gonna let the user have more than one cart that is um, open, sort of not ordered yet. So they can come create a shopping cart, add things to it, and then go away and come back, go away, come back as many times as they like. But once they place the order, we're gonna say that shopping cart is closed, it's ordered. And at that point, it moves on to further processing for delivery and that sort of thing. But that shopping cart is now closed, right? All right, so a shopping cart has already been ordered that goes into order history. Now, if we were to take a look at our API rules for this collection, we'll see that what we're saying is if you were to use the RESTful endpoint or even the client for pocket base, if you want to read the um, sh shopping carts records, you have to be authenticated. And not only are you authenticated, but you must be the owner of the shopping cart. So in terms of listing, searching, or viewing, or updating a shopping cart, you must be the owner of the shopping cart and it can be ordered, right? because order has to be equal false. Because if order is equal to true, it means it's already order, we can't change anything on it. So we can't use this API to change it. And in terms of creating a shopping cart, well then, all it requires that you be authenticated. We can't have just anonymous users creating shopping carts. We wanna know who they are. If they come back, we wouldn't be able to type the created shopping cart to them. So you must be authenticated. And so why your request auth.id cannot be empty. Okay, so this is all nice and good. But we also have another um, collection or view down the bottom called Carts View. So let's take a look at that. First, we have this select statement. So our view is a read-only collection and it's created by selecting some data from the underlying collections. In this case, it's just using the Carts collection. And so we're going to select essentially the same fields. However, the reason why we have this read-only collection is we're not going to use it for updating because it's read-only. We specifically would like to um, make the records that are available through here the ones that the user can um, see whether the shopping cart is ordered or not. Now, we could for the, in, including our you know, select query, like a condition to say, a weird clause to say, 
only um, include record um, cards that were already ordered or not ordered, but you can do that using filtering rules. So that's what we're going to do. So if we look at the um, API rules for this collection, this read-only collection, we see that it only requires that you be the authenticated user. And again, you can only see records for your collection, but it has no restrictions on whether it's the ordered ones or, you know, ones that are um, still open. And this is in contrast to our cards collection, which only list or allow you to search for um, cards that are open or on order, right? So I hope that makes sense what's going on, right? The two things are solving different purposes. All right, so now that we have this in place, let's revisit really quickly how we fetch data from Pocket Base using a JWT, right? So that's when we are authenticated. So if we go back to our Pocket Base um, directory and our examples, you'll see in episode 11, it's not the first one, but episode 11 is specifically where we create a, a cart and we, you know, use our JWT to fetch not only our cart um, collection, but also our cart view. So if you take a look at this example, very simple, you'll see that we log in as a user and then we are able to save the JWT that's returned. Then we fetch all um, then we fetch the records from the cart, which is just going to be one record. And then we fetch all the records from the cart view, which will be both of a record. So we can see um, it's very simple. You just authenticate as a user. We save the API token. We use the, authentic or we use the authorization header and the value bearer followed by the JWT. And that's essentially it. And then we can fetch records from the collections that we want. All right. So now that we know how to do that, we can go back to AppSmith and do the same thing. So let's do that. Okay. Once back in AppSmith, I'm going to clone our item list um, page and make that as the starting point for our um completed order or order history page page and so um, once i clone that i'm going to go to the query remember there's a query attached to this item list that's called get items where we name that to get completed orders because that's what we want to fetch and then we have to change the um you know the get request and so the url of course we have to change the collection name from items to carts view because that's what we're going to use and of course we have to say which fields we want to return and you can go double check in the pocket base collection but basically it's going to be our discount the payment method the field ordered field if you want um, and then there's a user field there but remember we can do like um, expand so we can say expand this um, linked field and so if we expand user, we can then access the username, the email, and their phone name. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you click run, you're not going to get back anything. So the first thing we have to address is that our request here doesn't include a JWT. So you don't want to use this tab that says authenticate because that's going to force you to create um, a database um, essentially a data source and then add a method to the data source and we're not going to cover that it's covered in documentation instead we want to just stick with an um, a queries and we this is very easy because since we're using HTTP methods we can just add a header remember it's just an authorization header that we need to add and we already know that the apps um, the token is stored or JWT is stored in AppSmith store so we can just reference that all right, so now that we've done that, our user here, Jane, uh, Mary Ann, sorry, doesn't have a cart. So even if we were to run this, we'll still get an empty list back. And so what we should do is let's change our user to John Doe. And of course, we have to update their password. And once we can log in, we'll see that we successfully authenticated as John Doe. Of course, their JWT is going to be saved. 
but our menu now is empty because we do, we're using full name for a menu name and John Doe doesn't have a um, full name. So let's go update John Doe record, give him a full name and then log out and log back in as John Doe. Now our menu um, is good because, or at least visible because we our, our user have name, not full name. Now what you can do is probably write the label for the menu in such a way that if there's no first name, then it use like the username. If it, there's no username, then it use like the email. So you can make that a lot better, in which case you don't have to go back and, you know, change it. Or you can just make sure that every user um, includes their full name, or you, since our login uses name, we can make the menu use the name instead of um, full name. All right, so with that completed, now let's go back and try our RESTful endpoint to get all the orders um, or the cards that were ordered for John Doe. And we'll see that once we run the query, it fails. Okay, so I spell authorization incorrectly in the header. I'm gonna change that and then rerun my query and you'll see that, yep, we get all the records and notice we get both completed and um, open orders, but we don't want that. So we should add a parameter to filter um, out records that are um, the card that is still open or basically where order is equals to true. So now that we see we can read the data and we get the records back that we want, um, updating the table is just a matter of um, changing a few things. We know how to edit these columns already. So I'm not going to spend too much time showing you this because you know how to do this. It's just for each column we want, we can um, change the label and of course configure it accordingly by clicking the um, setting icon there or hiding it if we want by clicking the um, visible versus non-visible icon. All right, so that's fine. Now here's the thing. If this is pass order, uh, what we might want to do since it was a completed order, right? Because this is completed order, right? Um, ordered field is equal to true. We might actually want to see the total, like taxes and um, the discount amount. Because if this order is completed, that means the cart has a total. So why don't we go add um, like a tax um, field and a subtotal field and maybe even a total? Because once we, the user click you know, add all the items to the cart. And then once they click um, to submit it, at that point we can, you know, compute the discount and the subtotal and what the total is gonna be. I'm gonna have taxes, subtotal and total, and I'm gonna give it a value. It doesn't matter what these are, like I'm just using this so that we can see something on the UI. So I'm not actually going through and add up the totals in the cart. I'm not really including the discount, I'm just typing in some values. Now, the other thing we need to do is go to our cards view and make sure that we're also including these, selecting these fields. So we're gonna add taxes, subtotal, and total to our select statement for the card view because we'll want that to come through also because that's actually what we're using for UI. So if we go and refresh our UI, um, well, actually this is not gonna change because our, um, query still does not select those other fields. So let's go to parameter and the fields we want and add tax, subtotal, and total. Now when we run the query, yes, we should get those um, values. And if we now go to the UI, and now again, once again, we can change these as we see fit, right? Currency fields as we see fit for the discount, you can choose where you want to show it as a percentage or you actually want to show it as a currency i'm going to pretend that we the user wants to see the discount as a currency so i'll set the type to currency and i'll do a calculation of just multiplying the discount times the subtotal now this is complaining because we have the labels column and even though it's hidden um we don't really have values for labels if we go to the settings we'll see it all our um, rule doesn't have an expand that labels. Now we can delete this field or call it something else, but um, 
I don't see an easy way to delete this. So I'm just going to drag it to the bottom and keep it hidden. Now, if we check our, um, if we try to test our order history page, we are not calling it from our menu. And so if you go to the menu and you select order history, you wouldn't be able to navigate to that page. So we should update our menu to say it how it should navigate to the um, order history page. Now remember, since each one of our pages, like the home page and item list page, have a copy of the menu, we'll have to make sure that we update the menu on each of those pages. That's all there is to it. And then once you have that sorted out, your navigation from the menu, then you should be able to sign in and navigate between the pages. And for, if you complete that order, you will be able to see it on your order history page. And in the case of the user John Doe, well, we'll see is one completed order. The other thing we can do when we run our application is that we've seen the navigation on top. So we can turn that off because this doesn't look pretty. It's a little bit annoying. So I rather navigation through the menu that we create as opposed to having a top navigation um, from AppSmith. So we can hide navigation. And so if we do that, um, that takes hides the navigation so we can turn that off. And I think the UI looks a little bit cleaner. I'm not saying it looks pretty, but it looks certainly look a little bit cleaner. Um, how good your application look? Well, depends on your skills and your love for UI design. The other thing we can do before we finish is remove the default value for our sign in u email user name and password. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for spending the time with me and being patient as we go through um, AppSmith. I know it's always been a long time since I posted a video. I've been traveling for work. But with that said, um, we're at the end. Anything else you want to do with AppSmith, it's in the documentation. It's not too difficult. What I've shown you so far in these eight um, videos should allow you to do quite a bit. And given what you learned from PocketBase before this, well, you can do even more because that's what we did here is we use PocketBase and AppSmith together. And so between these two, both of them, very easy to create and manage collection and UI application. And with the tool, you should be able to build some very impressive application very quickly. Definitely leave comments, um, thumbs up the video if you like what, the, um, what you see here. If you have problems or you plan to build application, please just drop me a comment. Let me know what kind of issues you have or what kind of applications you're planning to build or you're building. And so with that said, um, if this is your first time here, thank you for coming. Consider subscribing. I would love to have you as part of the family. Um, if you are already a supporter, thank you so much for your patience and for coming back. All right, take care, stay safe, bye.